Welcome to H&HN Daily. I'm Susanna Hopsalen, Senior Editor at Hospitals and Health Networks Magazine. The long-awaited to transition to ICD-10 is coming upon us October 2013. This shift to ICD-10 is going to change the way we capture healthcare information and give us a better handle on how we're providing care. Today, I'm joined by Adrian Edens, System Vice President and CIO at St. Luke's Health System to discuss preparing for ICD-10, the impact on hospital operations. Welcome, Adrian, and thank you for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. Adrian, what are the risks if a hospital fails to successfully implement ICD-10 by that deadline? The ICD-10 deadline presents a number of challenges for us. We have to make sure that our coders are trained and that physicians are providing really accurate documentation because if we don't get it right, we can end up with backlogs for the revenue cycle. When Canada went to ICD-10, they experienced some real drops in coder productivity and if the coders can't keep up, for us, that means the bills aren't getting out the door, the claims aren't being processed. So things can backlog, we could have claims denials, we can have unintended shifts in revenue because even slight coding errors or differences can result in thousands of dollars of reimbursement impact. And it can also impact our data in terms of patient care and certain payer relationships with contracts and risk arrangements and other things that may depend on ICD-10 coding. How is the IT department preparing for ICD-10? Well, for us, the first thing is to get the AHA Executive Briefing Guidebook. That was very helpful because it outlines a lot of activities that the whole healthcare organization needs to take on. For IT, the first thing is to do an assessment and some kind of an impact analysis to figure out where you're currently capturing ICD-10 codes, where you're storing them, how you're using them, and which systems they're in so that you can start to take a look at what you have to do to remediate each of those systems or potentially to replace them. What are some of the other budgetary impacts of the ICD-10 implementation? A large part of it from an IT perspective is making sure that you've talked with your vendors and there are often upgrade charges. So if you're not on the ICD-10 compliant version, they're going to charge you an upgrade. And the other part is to make sure that you're scheduling that upgrade because they have so much demand that if you don't get in there early, you may find that the timing you would like to do your upgrade is not going to work. You also have to try to coordinate the upgrades of things like your coding systems with your revenue cycle systems so that they're not coming on to a compliant version at different times. So it's very challenging. You may need to rewrite interfaces because the codes themselves are not formatted the same. There are larger uh, record size and they have alpha and numeric characters in them so you have to make sure all your interfaces you've looked at and that they can pass those codes. So there's a lot of budgetary impact in terms of how much time you're going to need both to upgrade the software you own and to write new interfaces for things that you might have to communicate differently. In closing, Adrian, is there anything that you'd recommend that hospitals do right now to make sure they're getting ready for ICD-10? The first thing that we did, which I think is important, is make sure that your executive team and your board is educated about ICD-10 and the impacts. The other part is to engage your physician community because a lot of doing well with ICD-10 is changing the way physicians document. There's a lot more detail that's required in ICD-10 coding. It's the side of the body, the body part, the devices that are used, and the numbers of codes. The changes in the numbers of codes are significant just so people know, we go in diagnosis codes from 13,000 codes to 68,000 codes. And the procedure codes go from 3,000 codes to 72,000 codes. That's a huge change for physicians and for coders to understand all that. So starting very, very early to do the education and to help train medical staff so they are documenting effectively. And then for all of us to be getting ready and coordinating between the HIM revenue cycle and IT teams and also with our payers to talk about when they're going to convert so that we don't end up with a problem as we flip the switch and are starting to communicate ICD-10 data between ourselves and the payer community and CMS. Thank you so much for uh, 
letting us know what we need to do to get ready for ICD-10, the teams we need to involve, the budget impact, and also the education that needs to go on, not only within the hospital, but with physician groups. I'm Susanna Hopsalin with h and Daily.